Hi, this is Allison, and we're back with part 7 of the Harry Potter Analysis Book review series. So without any further ado, let's get right back to the bookshelf and see what's going on. So as you can see, we've added to the table just a little bit more from the other time. What's that peeking out by what someone rightly guessed can guess what that furry book is? In here we have the, um, the fall movie preview 2008 with the Half-Blood Prince cover on it. I saw this at a newsstand at a train station a, a good week after I already heard that the movie had been moved back to July, but apparently uh, Entertainment Weekly had not gotten the memo. I wonder if someone got fired over this. Anyway, you can find this on eBay, but there's that magazine. Entertainment Weekly is great anyway, um, just as a fun magazine. There's not a lot of advertising in it. It's, it's good. My Hedwig got this a long time ago. I don't even think they make that Hedwig anymore. It was right around the time of the first film, maybe the second film. It came with that, uh, the red and gold, too. I haven't seen that on an owl before. That's cool. Okay, so we're back, uh, to the pal. We finally have all the books here at this point. Um, you can see one right above Harry of History here. We're gonna get to that one later. I'll leave it as a mystery right now, unless you can, uh, see the, the title. If you can, you know, points to you whatever house you're in. Okay, but for now we're just going to go down and we're going to look at the book I already pulled off the shelf. And this is a book actually from, I believe, 2003, because this is before book, f yeah, it had to be 2003. This is before book five was published, and it's called The Hidden Key to Harry Potter. And this book is another one by John Granger. Now, this book is very similar to How Harry Cast His Spell, so it's not actually too necessary for you to read this one, but there's some neat little tidbits in here about the first four books that, um, it's almost like a director's cut, like expanded edition. You know when you buy a DVD and you get the second disc and there's special features on it? Well, if you can get this book for like five or ten bucks with the others, uh, it's worth it for the quote special features. So let's look. Uh, Steve Vander Ark here who was in the news from the, uh, the the trial in spring of 2008, left a quote here about Granger's book. It says, This is a book that every Harry Potter fan will want to own, and keep in mind, this is from 2003. That's especially true, however, if you find yourself having to defend Harry Potter against those who would turn it over to the devil. And that's from Steve uh, Vander Ark. This is before Zosima Press was created. Actually, no, Zosima Press was, was in business at this point, but neat book. I'm going to open it up, and oh my gosh, what's this? What is this? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Oh, oh, I know what this is. That's cool. This is why I met John Granger the first time. My school had these cool posters hanging on the wall, and I can't, I can't imagine, um, I can't imagine not going to something if I see this poster hanging on the wall. Um, uh, I saw him right before, as I said before, uh, book seven came out, so this is really an older book that I bought from him, but some proceeds were going to a charity, in, I think, in Romania, so that was really awesome. Okay, but here's John Granger, if you want to see his face. His face is online. This isn't new. Um, no spoilers there. This is another book that I think he, uh, he worked with editing-wise. Yeah, edited by John Granger, called Who Killed Albus Dumbledore? I haven't read this one. Dark Mark on the Tower. But this is, of course, in between Half-Blood Prince and Deathly Hallows. And it says, do you know who killed Albus Dumbledore? And I'm like, you know what? I thought, I thought I did. I, I think, I think it was Nate. It said, come and see John Granger. This is an awesome poster. Author of Who Killed Albus Dumbledore? He's really the editor. Looking for God in Harry Potter. I still want to read that book. And The Hidden Key to Harry Potter, February 22nd at 12.30. Dun, dun, dun. It's okay. It wasn't really spring. It was still winter, but February 22nd at 12.30. Yeah, it's sort of close to my birthday, so that was like an awesome, awesome uh, birthday present. So yeah, the full poster. Let's open it all up. Let's take a look at it. I'm just going to cut off the bottom because, yeah, this is online. This. W wouldn't you go to something like that if you saw that on your school wall? I, I would. Anyway. He handed out some, some diagrams. Uh, this is sort of fun. Uh, I think this would be great. I wish it was in a book, actually. Let's look at this diagram real quick. 
We only know, it says, we only know what Harry sees and thinks, which is only a small part of what's going on in these stories. Imagine if we knew what the major players were thinking and doing. And mind you, this is before book seven. Okay, one big circle is Dumbledore knows this much. Another big circle, the one with the stripes going down, is Snape knows this much. And the bottom is Lord Voldemort knows this much. And Harry's in the center, and he, he doesn't know everything. I call this the clueless, um, the clueless graph. It's, it's a lot of fun. Anyway, Hidden Key to Harry Potter, as I said, it's a lot like, um, how Harry casts his spell. So this isn't absolutely necessary, but there's a great explanation about the purposes behind Quidditch in the fourth Harry Potter book. And I actually mentioned this, uh, the last time I saw him. And he said, yeah, it was something that was cut out of how Harry cast his spell because the publishers, darn them, um, thought that people, it was too long, people won't want to read that. Okay, now, that, that's an awesome part. As you can see, that was a chapter about choice in Harry Potter. This is a theme taken up by a lot of, a lot of authors. And, uh, death and bereavement. There's a lot of that. And more charts. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, more charts. Charts are fun. Yeah, so... That's another cool chart. All right, this book isn't edited too well, but it's still uh, fun to read. If you have a couple extra bucks, you could probably find it on eBay. So I hope you've enjoyed this sort of like archival Harry Potter analysis book that's not too relevant, but fun, fun, fun.